His whole philosophy was focused on this one very simple principle. If you've clicked this video, it's because you tried to learn programming in 2020, but couldn't. Either you struggled to get started, got stuck along the way, or simply just gave up. I'm gonna go over three essential things that you need to know when it comes to learning programming, with number three being the most critical. The brain is the most demanding organ, requiring 10 times more energy than the rest of the body. It's the least understood in the field of anatomy, but imaging technology over the years has helped us to better understand activity in the brain in the context of learning. When we talk about learning, we have to talk about one thing, motivation. When you start learning programming, your motivation is at its highest, probably the most that it'll ever be. At this point, you've made the decision to learn programming, whether it's because you want to become a programmer at a big tech company because of the high salaries and perks, or maybe it's just because you want to learn something different. Because you're so motivated, you're very attentive, focused, and ready to knuckle down and give this programming thing a try. Now, this is both good and bad. It's really good because your curiosity and enthusiasm is going to help you a load at the beginning. However, However, it can be bad, especially if you're unaware of this one thing. Motivation is not consistent. At the beginning, programming is actually quite easy. Variables, conditions, and loops are all quite intuitive, and you can get a grasp of all of it pretty quickly. Now combine this with the fact that your motivation is at its highest, you're going to power through these programming basics as quickly as Usain Bolt on a 100 meter track. However, unfortunately, this doesn't stay for long. As you can expect, programming is like math. It gets harder over time. When you finish the basics, you end up tackling harder programming concepts and this takes you outside of your comfort zone. We've all been there. When you've come across a difficult programming concept that you can't get your head around, you almost just want to bash your head against the wall. Or maybe there's a bug that you spent hours trying to fix but you can't figure out what's wrong. These are all negative feelings that actually impact your motivation. Unless you keep an eye on this, your motivation actually starts to decrease pretty quickly. You'll end up not feeling good about programming and you'll probably leave coding to the weekends instead of during the week. You'll find it easier to not continue your progress or avoid working on a bug that's stopping your program from working. At some point, you're gonna reach a crossing point which can become quite dangerous. This is the crux of the learning process. You're deep into the weeds of programming and your motivation is quite low and the programming is quite difficult. At this point, most people give up, concluding that it was too difficult and end up not wanting to learn programming at all. So the golden question is, how can you avoid this? How can you stay consistently motivated so that you can finally learn programming? One of my favorite books of 2020 was written by James Clear, Atomic Habits. It's a book that talks about habits, how they're formed, and how you can use that knowledge to your advantage. It talks about how the British cycling team went from practically winning nothing to then winning 178 world championships, 66 Paralympic or Olympic medals, and five Tour de France victories. It has gone down as being the most successful run in cycling history. The question is, how did they do it? They attribute it to one man named Dave Burlesford, who was hired as the performance director at this critical turning point. His whole philosophy was focused on this one very simple principle. This idea is paraphrased as being marginal gains. The whole idea was that if you broke down everything that goes into cycling and improve each one of those things by 1%, you'll get a significant increase when you put all of them together. Getting 1% better every day is significantly and mathematically much better than getting 1% worse every day. Let's theoretically say that you want to learn programming and you've decided that you want to learn as much as you can very quickly. That can tell you will be too difficult and you'll end up coming across a lot of challenges that are simply gonna demotivate you. Instead, if you focus on getting ever so slightly better each day, you're gonna build a system of habit. Each day, the level of progress won't be so significant, but more importantly, it's gonna be motivating. That's so important because every single day, as you get ever so slightly better, you're gonna feel better and your motivation is going to increase. That increase in motivation is going to compound and it's going to get more and more over time. And that increase in motivation is going to give you a lot of confidence, especially when you're tackling harder programming problems and concepts. You'll end up spending less time trying to learn programming as quickly as possible, but rather focus on becoming a better programmer. Instead of seeing learning programming as a final destination, this system is going to help you approach programming 
as a journey. Now with all of this in mind, I highly recommend that in 2021, you approach learning programming with this system of habit. If you apply this system, your learning, motivation, confidence, and knowledge are going to increase and compound over time. Not only will the system of habit help you to become a very good programmer, but it will also help you to become really good at everything else. Quick note, I've got some really good news. I'm giving away a free Python guide that I usually sell. It's the perfect start if you're thinking about learning Python programming, and you can get it by clicking the link above or the link in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a lovely holiday, and I'll see you all in 2021. Peace.